So the first thing I did was um, started writing down some scenarios. I'm not going to go through that, but like some scenarios so that, so that I could understand what was going on and then come up with a simple sequence diagram of, you know, you're a consumer. So you go to our app and you want to get a list of the producers that are in your area. This is all very local about being locally produced. So um, it's basically the first iteration of this is just producers in your postcode, essentially. Um, so you can, and then what you do is you negotiate a supply agreement, same as you would do with the retailer, except this is directly to the producer. Once you've got your supply agreements, then there's this whole production cycle. So um, the producer creates a bill, uh, and then each time, each block of power, so we're doing it in five minute, five minute blocks now. So you, um, the producer creates a five minute block of power, it gets consumed by the consumer. And then you create this uh, holochain entry for the supply block, which I haven't got it at the moment, but the idea is, is that the supply or the consumer will then be able to put in some quality metrics to say, you know, how good was the power, you know, did it, all that kind of stuff. And then you get a bill. And I was like, oh yeah, cool, this is all right. So this, this made logical sense to me and I started coding this up. And then <clears throat> I was like, I wanted to, so I did an entity relationship diagram as well so that I could understand how all these things are fitting together. So you got producers and consumers with a supply agreement and then the producer creates the supply block. It gets charged to the consumer based on the agreement and then the power is received by the consumer, et cetera. And then <clears throat> you create this bill. And then I was like, how do you, how are we gonna pay the bill? We've got these little five minute increments of power coming from multiple producers to one consumer to supply power to themselves, right? And I was like, that looks really much like hollow fuel. Cause what I did was <laughs> I went to the, uh, the hollow website, copied the hollow fuel diagram and then just changed a few things on it so that, uh, and, and I didn't, it, there was no massaging to make this work on, it just works. Because each of these is a solar producer. Each of your consumers, which can go down to individual devices, because we've got these smart plugs and things like that. Each of these devices is essentially a user in Holo. So Holo, you've got the reserve account, and then you need someone to manage the infrastructure, which is Red Group. And it was just like, we had this moment of like, oh my God, it's just, it's basically exactly the same as the way Holofuel works. <clears throat> um, should I go, do you want me to show you some code now? Or yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so after I had that revelation, I was like, well, this is gonna be really cool. So now we can just build the, like the Red Group side of things. And then we can literally work with Holo to implement our own type of um, currency. So I was like, okay, it's been 12 months since I wrote any Holochain code. What am I gonna do? And I found this awesome tool. See that? Literally, you just write this, right? This, 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 you did nothing installed. You can literally, if you've got NPM installed, which every developer has, you can go NPM init Holochain and press return. There you go. There you go, yep, let's proceed with that. <clears throat> it pops up a nice UI for you to decide what your app is. Let's call this our AMA1. You can pick your UI front end, I like view, so I pick view. When you name all your things, you can um, define your entry definitions, your zones, all this kind of stuff. All this stuff, which is quite difficult to do if you're trying to code it yourself right? and you don't know what you're doing. And you can do, just fill this out and then press scaffold. And it shows you what it's going to create. It creates a UI for you. It's got all your DNA, has all your testing as well. And all this stuff about work directory about how your DNAs get now get packaged up into haps and things like that. That's all relatively new to me. Um, and go create. And we'll just hit automatic setup and switch back to the terminal. And you can see here it's using this cool new Cashix thing for Holochain as well. This is literally going to run Nick Shell, install the app and I will end up with an entire application. It looks exactly like this, because this is exactly what I did for Iron, right? Yep. So in the zone, you can see these are all the different bits and pieces 
that I put in here as uh, entry types. So these entry depths. This is your zone name, ledger. It's this bit here. DNA name is the top level thing here, uh, micro ledger. And it creates all the code for you. And it's really nicely done code too. Like your entries are separate from the way that it's handled. So these are all the things like get, create, update, all that kind of thing. And you'll notice that down here, you can set read, update, delete if you want those functions. So on some functions, you don't want that. I think on the supply block, I didn't do that. See on the supply block, you can only create it. You can't do anything else. So <clears throat> this creates really, really nice code, which also comes with the thing you need most is tests. So all the tests are here as well. So you can wow. see it's got all the testing and it's really cleverly done. Like again, quite a master and he's done a really good job here. Um, yeah. And this is really nicely done. So I actually relearned how to do Holochain coding again from this uh, application. <laughs> and while we're at it, we might as well show you. So there's some really neat things that are not just code, but also how, you, how do you do all this stuff? So if you look in the package JSON file, it's got a whole bunch of commands on what to actually do. So if I go back to my code, oh, see, it's worked already. So now we've got this um, app called AMA1. Let's load it up while we're AMA1. Yes. And there you go. There's the UI, there's all your DNA. So we did the zone called zone zero, entry death. That's interesting. And that was only a couple couple of minutes, that's super fast. Um, right, so if we go back to the one I'm actually working on, and we'll just stop this. What's really cool now is that uh, in, you can do, so if I make a change to my code, what's that? So you do that, if you spell it correctly. See, nothing's changed from the build it stuff. <laughs> it's like she so there you go, it's built. So any new code that I've done has now been built. And now I can do NPM around the uh, just will actually start the conductor for you. And there's my conductor running. And you'll see that there's also all these other uh, nice things in here which do things like uh, networking. So you can write NPM network three and the way this is set up, this will actually start three conductors and it will start three agents for you and three URs and connect them all together for you. Super easy. So this is light years ahead of where I was writing code. I was actually um, creating the config files and copying them and then doing all this string passing and stuff to make all these different ones. Don't have to do that now because there's really nice tools like this one. Uh, HCDNA pack. And, uh, the generate, there's a generate one somewhere. Uh, so I guess just to add to what uh, Phil's saying is when, is when we brought them in, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, when we brought them in, um, so we had this, this code base that we did with this university and a lot of these concepts were pretty primitive and done by hand. And he just came and uh, started using the, the tools that are now available in Holochain, mapped them to what we're doing. And there we go, we've got a, an app. Amazing. So I'll let you keep, let you keep going. Yeah. Um... Oh, I don't know, because I was on the wrong one. Um... So while you're doing that, I'll just explain a bit about um, if, if people people probably if they've been following Holochain enough, they've heard about Red Grid. Um, what's interesting is we're a commercial company. Uh, there's a lot of projects in Holochain, which are really good, but uh, we're actually a for-profit company in Red Grid. And September we created Ion, which is a global play, 
and that's open source. So the relationship between the two is that Regra is our first service provider. I've got my Ion hat on now and my Ion shirt. And the, the, the code that's produced there will get fed up and become open source in some way. That'll get enriched by many other red grids around the world, and then they can bring it down. So I see it as a virtual, virtuous cycle where um, commercial companies create things. Yep, thanks Nathan for the URL in the chat. And it goes up by on uh, curates and apps generalizes, and then it's available to others. And that's how we do it. Also in, in the energy space, um, I, I made a list of all the directions we're in and we're slightly ahead of everything, which is actually a bit of a problem for a commercial company because, um, well, we're blue ocean, we're creating all this stuff. Um, okay, so you're redoing this, Phil? Yep, two seconds. So I've got my conductor running now. Right. I miss uh, you. Yeah, so in the, <laughs> in the energy <laughs> space, there's something called embedded networks, which uh, is, in, is their term in energies. And it's an enclosed, part of the problem is regulations around the world and hooking into national grids. But an embedded network is actually a microgrid that can stand by itself. So you can think about things like shopping centers or universities or campuses or schools that are big enough where energy may come in from outside, but a lot of it more and more can be generated internally. So you have an internal community and that's, there. They, these are happening now. And uh, we'll get Sim, Simon to talk a bit about community batteries because that's something he's been looking at quite a bit. So do you want, do you want to talk a bit about that, Sim? Yeah, I did, are you ready to go? Sure, you, yeah, just want, well, you guys haven't seen this, but this is what I've been working on the last few days. So the, <laughs> okay. Wait. The conductor's running here. And this is the front end. So by, so the idea is to producers and consumers. So we're gonna join up as a producer. And because it's all done on postcodes, I just separated this out, so it's much easier. And you can pick the generation method. And uh, submit. <clears throat> so now we've got a producer. And then if you're a consumer, I've been a little bit further with this one, same sort of thing. Put your address in. And then same postcode. And then you go submit. <clears throat> and then what we're gonna do next is you're gonna pick which type of producers in your local area do you wanna do you wanna set up a supply ground with? Like is it your local community battery? Your neighbor's solar system or somebody's got wind in the area as well. And then you'll be able to set up the supply agreements like we've got up here. And then start supplying out. And because it's me, because it's all 